Hello humanoids of the internet. My name is Bob. Uh, I'm going to do a tutorial for you on space planes. Uh, now I've got a bit of a pain in my neck and um, allergies and stuff, but I didn't want to put this off anymore because I haven't been uh, doing any videos for a while, so let's get started. Uh, as always, um, I'm not going to use pre-made space planes or pre-made -pre rockets. Uh, I'm going to make it there in front of your eyes. If it fails, it fails. If it succeeds, it, it succeeds. So. Uh, it'll be a little adventure for the both of us. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to the space plane hangar. And we're going to use the uh, Mark III cockpit. Okay, uh, now a lot of people say that uh, space planes um, are more difficult to do than rockets. Uh, and in fact they are more difficult to do than rockets. Uh, the reason for that is that in addition to all the other things you have to worry about with rockets, uh, you also have to worry about balance issues. Uh, if you're too front heavy, too back heavy, and so on. Plus, you got to land the thing on a runway, uh, so or on a surface. Uh, so uh, it is more complex in that respect. Uh, and uh, you can easily spend hours, frustrating hours, making space planes that don't work. So we'll try not to do that this time. Okay, one of the first things we're going to do is put on an RCS module. Uh, you may be wondering why I would be, do I would be doing that. Uh, uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One, if you want your space plane to land on a surface other than uh, Kerbin, if you want to land on the moon or something, uh, it's kind of hard to land on your tail, tail fin. So you want to try to land horizontally if you can, but there's no air to hold you up. So we're going to put in some uh, RCS fuel and thrusters uh, in the um, eventuality that we actually decide to take it somewhere besides orbit. Uh, let's see... I'm going to try to use stock parts here, even though i got so many other parts that I don't always know the difference. Uh, so, uh, But we'll try to use uh, stock parts. We're going to use a couple of these RCS tanks. Uh, stick a nose on it. And the avionics package. I have a fan run in the background, so it probably sounds a little funky. Uh, or sounds noisy, probably. Uh, okay, that's okay for now. We'll, we'll put in the uh, actual RCS thrusters later on. Um, right now we need an adapter part. Like this one. Wrong way. This one. No, wrong way. There we go. Okay. And we're going to put in several of these. Uh, their uh, uh, weight to fuel balance is pretty reasonably good. Uh, it's not as good as some uh, mod parts. But we'll go with this. Uh, uh, now, this is not the only fuel we're going to use. Uh, we're going to actually have some drop tanks. Uh, now, right now, except for the front part, um, the plane is relatively balanced. In other words, the center of balance is sort of more or less in the middle, uh, maybe right around here. Um, now, that's going to change when I add engines. Uh, and uh, when you do add engines, you've got a choice to make. Uh, do you want jet engines as well as rocket engines? Or do you just want rocket engines? Um, the benefit of having jet engines is is that for the first 15,000 meters, they're a lot more fuel efficient than rocket engines. Uh, the downside is that's more weight, and most of most of the uh, most of your travel time, you're not going to be using them, uh, and also tends to add more weight to the back of the plane, uh, which makes things unbalanced. So we're going to start off with. Uh, no uh, jet engines, uh, and then we will we may may we may modify them to, to add jet engines later on uh, if we have time. I'm just going to use an air spike. That's a very efficient engine, and it's also uh, just just as efficient in vacuum as it is in the atmosphere, and that weighs uh, one a mass of one. Okay, now we're going to add some wings. Uh, you're going to want to have wing, wings add lift, uh, and uh, for takeoff and landing, you're going to want to have uh, your lift mostly distributed in the areas where you have have most of your weight. Um, right now, it's slightly back heavy, I would say. Uh, in a, in the later version, uh, 0 0.17, they'll actually show you what your center of balance is. Uh, right right now, we have to to uh, guess. Uh, so we want to. Uh, distribute the wing area sort of evenly but more towards the back and we will do that
and the getting the balance right can be a bit of a challenge at first. Uh, like I said, though, uh, it's going to get a lot easier with the next version because uh, it's going to have uh, uh, it'll show you what your center of balance is. Now these are pretty uh, pretty large wings. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, but uh, the thing is, wings the, these wings don't weigh very much at all, and they uh, counteract their their weight uh, with uh, generating a lot of lift. So. Okay, now a good airplane has little ailerons or flaps or whatever you call them uh, that help to uh, steer your aircraft in the atmosphere. Um, as a general rule, it's kind of good to um, uh, keep your control surfaces as close to the center of uh, your airplane as you can. Uh, reason being uh, is if you have it way out here, that's going to uh, control turn the aircraft over much more powerfully. Uh, and um, uh, it's actually more of a problem uh, over controlling these aircraft than it is under controlling them. Uh, so if you keep it closer to the center of the aircraft, uh, you will um, find it uh, that it's, they're not going to exert as much control, and so strangely enough, they'll be more it'll be more controllable because it won't be wobbling wildly every time you uh, try to control it. So I'm going to go with a single tail. And I'll put a couple more out here. Okay, uh, an important thing to have on a, a space plane or airplanes in general uh, in this context uh, is a, a canard or canard, I don't know what the hell they're called, but uh, it's basically a wing at the front of your aircraft. Uh, it'll do two things for you. It'll try to, to kind of keep you from stalling. Uh, it'll also help you uh, adjust your pitch a lot better. So we're going to put those there. Okay. So we have these here. We have rudders. And uh, we have the canard, uh, canard, whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> uh, and uh, we need to have... Uh, landing gear. Uh, if you can, it's a good idea to uh, have your front landing gear be a little bit higher than your back landing gear. Uh, that's to help you catch air and um, and take off a little easier. Um, but it, you know, that can be overdone as well. So uh, you want to, to be careful with that. Uh, we're going to uh, put the landing gear on these wings. And that's going to uh, help us actually uh, if we decide to take this to a uh, planetary surface um, uh, to have a little space in case there's some unevenness in the terrain. It may help us a little bit. So we won't be scraping our bottoms. Okay. We're doing the same thing over here except we're, it's going to be vertical. So it'll actually be a little bit higher than the other ones. There we go. Okay. Now, for a regular airplane, uh, it may not necessarily be that important to support these um, uh, these legs that well. Uh, if you're going to uh, land somewhere, it's really important to support them very well with struts. So, uh, let's go ahead and get that done. Also, um, uh, doing your um, supports for the rest of the uh, wing, uh, it's important to kind of follow the, uh, the the patterns of likely stress. Now, when this plane lands, it's going to put a lot of stress on this landing gear, which is going to put a lot of stress on these wings. So you want to support those pretty good uh, with struts. I'll probably uh, skip past the part where I'm st strutting everything, everything together. I just got it's going to take, take too long uh, for the video. Um, but um, uh, you get to get the general idea is that, that you're going to want to have a, a nice connection going here uh, for the, the stress that's, that's going to be hitting these, these legs. Because uh, if you support this and don't support the rest of it, this wing will just pop off and you'll be 
in just the same bad condition as you would be otherwise. So I'll go ahead and start adding some struts and then you can take a look at it when it's done. Okay, we're back, and you can see here uh, I have put struts all along the uh, line where there's uh, likely to be some stress. Uh, we got a little bit of stress probably caused that will be caused by these uh, uh, rudders here. A whole lot of stress caused by the landing gear pushing up against the wings. So all through here, I've connected that up very well with struts. Up here, not that worried so much. It shouldn't uh, really undergo a whole lot of stress. Uh, so for right now, I'm not going to worry about putting any struts on that at all. Um, also, you may notice that we have an awful lot of wing back here, not very much up here. Uh, now most of, most designs tend to be a little tail heavy, uh, so that's okay, but um, uh, we don't really have that much weight back here for right now. Um, so I may put a small wing up here as a counterbalance. The name for that is, let's try these. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's... Yeah. Keep these up just a tad. And we'll put on some uh, RCS thrusters. Okay, and we're also going to put some RCS thrusters under the nose and under the tail. Uh, that is um, uh, not something that's going to be all that important for uh, our our flight. Uh, what I'm going to use it for is if we uh, move on to do a um, landing on a surface like uh, the moon or Minimus, uh, we're going to want to land this horizontally in a perfect world. And so uh, I'm going to use these as uh, braking rockets uh, to help me land. So Okay. And that again is just for if we decide to land on the moon. Uh, we're going to need to have, or we should have some, some, some way of uh, doing the final descent um, that's controllable that's not on all the time, and uh, so that, that's why we use the RCS thrusters. We can't really have an engine under here unless uh, because we don't have a way of turning it off. Um, you would not normally want to have this except for uh, landing on a, on a surface like the moon. They're also kind of helpful uh, in regular air landings, um, but. Uh, uh, that's why we have them is for um, uh, when we go if we go to the moon with this we want to have some way of landing horizontally instead of having to tack on some some landing legs onto this and I've done that before and it's not not fun it's not good <laughs> I mean you could do it but uh, it's not the uh, preferred way of doing it so uh, we want to do some drop tanks uh, the drop tanks are uh, just surplus fuel uh, that we can get rid of the tanks when we're done with them. Let's get a linear adapter. Stick that here. And let's get a couple of fuel tanks. I would normally use these um, as they're very light for their weight. Um, but those are, I think, again, part of the C7 airplane pack. And so we'll try to do without those. Um, there are a number of other good fuel tanks here that I'm not going to use because they're not stocked. So well, let's just go ahead and use them. Regular plain old heavy stock tanks. And we'll use two of them.